Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press, and I have with me today Randy Lundeen. He's the Senior Product Manager for Mission Critical Service. How are you doing, Randy? Good, David. I'm glad to be here. Um, so what we're going to talk today about is the 3850X6. It's a four-socket, 4U rack server. It's the top of the line for our Lenovo servers. It's an award-winning design that you'll see as we start to pull the various components out. It's won numerous one, number one benchmarks. As far as who it's positioned for, it's positioned for large databases, large virtualization, in-memory analytics, and mission-critical applications. So let's let's show everyone the, the yeah. server, David. Yeah, as you mentioned, as Randy <coughs> mentioned, the, the the design of this rack server is unusual in the sense that all the components are accessible from either the front of the server or from the rear. There are no <coughs> no covers to remove to uh, to get access to to all the components. No top cover. Yeah. Yeah, so along, along the front you can see these uh, circular openings. These are the hot swap fans. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell from the orange handle that um, they simply remove, um, remove you, you can uh, uh, replace those while the system is running. They are redundant. Yeah. Um, the the compute, um, compute books, we'll, we'll talk about those in a moment. Those are the processors and memory. They are behind <coughs> the fans. And over here we have our storage book. Um, now, I mentioned uh, the term book because we, are, we consider these as as books, like books on a bookshelf, the idea being that you can easily remove them. Right. They're a modular design. Easily remove them. Um, hot swap components such as the fans right. are easily to remove from the front or from the back. Um, and it's designed, designed it that way to be highly available system. Yeah, so um, you rack the server one time, and it doesn't need to get pulled in and out. All the components come out of the front or the back of the server. Right, yep. On this side here, this is the storage book. Um, we have the usual components such as a VGA port and a USB 3 and a single USB 2 port. Um, we also have this uh, very handy LCD uh, panel here. Randy, um, uses for that? That's for the uh, monitoring of the server. It gives various error messages, various components. It comes in very handy. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about it when we get into the server, but it, it, it supports a light path diagnostics as well to help identify um, critical components that um, may be coming up for an issue, but before the issue is actually hit. So you can replace it and keep the server up and running. And it also gives you access to information such as the IP address of the management module and other things like that that might be useful during the regular operation of the server. Um, the, it is a storage book, so this is where the the uh, internal drives are located. Right. Uh, eight, two and a half inch bays. Right. Um, it also supports the one point, the smaller one point eight inch right. uh, drives as well. Uh, Randy, you've got a different uh, different set of drives. Yeah. Here. So what I have here is an example of three different types of storage devices. This is uh, an NVMe SSD, very fast writing and reading from it. As you can see, it is in a two and a half inch form factor a SAS or SATA um, SSD as well, and then a traditional spinning drive. And as you can see, all three of these are fit in the standard two and a half inch form factor, and so they would fit there in that same spot. And if we had a different backplane here, which is currently supporting the 1.8 inch SSDs, you could fit another four of these up here as well. Okay, so. Um, I pulled out one of the hot swap fans. These are in front of the compute books. Um, so let me show you how to access the compute book. Uh, the, the fans themselves are hot swap, but the compute books are not hot swap. Correct. So you need to power the Correct. server down uh, before remo removing those. So to access the compute book, you remove the top fan and then slide this lever across and that releases a handle, which then allows us to easily pull out the compute book like so. And you can see, Innovative design in that the memory DIMMs and components are actually on both sides of the compute book. Uh, the, each compute book has one processor and uh, a total of 24 DIMMs, 12 DIMMs on each side. So if I open this up here. Yep. Okay, so you can see on this side of the compute book we have the processor. This is the, right. uh, the Intel Xeon uh, E7 V4 processor. Correct, the, the, the latest the, processor, latest series, right? Yes. Um, with a with a pretty significant heat sink on the top mm -hmm. to keep the processor cool. The the server supports the E7 4800 and 8800 series right. processors. Um, uh, memory, these are the uh, <coughs> Lenovo True DDR4 memory right. DIMMs. Uh, there are 12 DIMM sockets on this side, 12 on the other side for a total of 24. And if with the four compute books installed, that's a total of 96 
memory to him. So really significant memory capacity, right, Randy? Right. Yep. Um, totals three is it three terabytes. So with with four compute books, um, that gives you a total of ninety six DIMM slots, up to six terabytes of data, and and this large. Um, six terabytes of memory, I'm sorry. But this large memory, what it supports is the large uh, virtualized uh, workloads, uh, mission critical applications, and in memory analytics and in memory databases is what is key, um, really needs a lot of memory. And these servers here support a lot of memory. Now, you notice the cover that I removed has a, a clear panel through it that allows you to see uh, what DIMMs were installed, but also more importantly, to see if, the, if there are memory faults, um, these, this panel will allow you to see if there are any LEDs lit up um, right. in case a DIMM fails. Uh, that is our light path diagnostic system. Um, and you'll see here at the front here, there's this button Little here. Button right um, if I press this button while the, the computer book is out, that activates the power uh, subsystem for the computer book right. to display those LEDs. So it's an easy way, you press the button there, the, if any of the DIMMs have failed, that will light up those the LEDs on each particular DIM, and it's one LED per DIM, so it makes right. it very easy to identify which components have failed, quick to replace, and get the system back up and running. And you'll be able to see that even before taking this cover off. That's because of the uh, clear panel here. Right. You'll be able to identify which DIM is failed and then know which one to replace before mm -hmm. even taking this off. Yep, so if I just flip over to the other side, uh, <coughs> you'll see it is basically the same um, Another 12 DIMMs um, on the back side of the, of the compute book as well. Another thing interesting about these compute books are that you can update, if you owned a previous generation of this server, this is the, the third refresh of this server, I mean the second refresh that we've had, you can update a previous generation of this server by replacing these compute books with the latest com DDR4 compute books that have the E7 V3, or V4, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. processors, you can update the V2 processors or the V3 by just putting in a new compute book and everything else in the server um, remains unchanged. Mm. So there's few parts on the floor. It's a very quick upgrade. Right. Very convenient. And putting, putting the compute book back in is another very simple process. Um, insert and the lever back up there and then reinsert the hot swap fan. Uh, like so. They, let's show everyone the storage book. All right, so to eject that, um, push this button on the side here, yep. again a handle comes out and that allows us to open it up <laughs> like so. So the, store, the drives are at the front and the drives are connected via backplanes to two PCIe slots at the back. Right. Um, these are PCIe 3 by 8 uh, and these currently have two um, SAS SATA RAID controllers. Correct. Uh, the, the server also supports SAS HBAs and the NVMe, the PCI right. expanders, um, for use with the NVMe drives you talked about. And the nice ago. thing about having the storage controller PCI slots in the front is that it doesn't take away valuable PCI uh, slots in the back of your server like a traditional mm. server typically does. Mm. Yep. And you don't have the long, messy cables running from all the way at the back PCI slots to the front of the server. It's all yeah. self-contained within this part, within the storage book. It's a it's a nice uh, modular design again that makes everything very easy to to access. All right, so that's the storage book and the compute book to the front. Right. Let's uh, let's spin it around, Randy, to the back of the server. Okay. Um, I would point out too as we go, um, this server has integrated handles. Uh, so if you're looking to uh, when you install the server at the right. beginning, or if you're taking it out to move to another rack, then the handles are right there. You don't need to. Right. Remember where you put them. It is a fairly heavy server. It's a nice convenience factor, yeah. So they just go like so. Okay. So at the back of the server is where all the PCIe slots, PCIe slots are. Um, so the, the server has a total of 12 PCIe slots. Mm -hmm. We already showed you the first two at the front, the, the two for the, on the storage book. At the back there are a total then of 10 slots available, um, up to 10. Um, and you can see those at the front there. Um, Randy, let's talk about the book design. Yeah. Um, what have we got here? So we have a, the, we'll, we'll pull each one of these up. We have the primary I.O. book that comes with every server, and then there's a choice of two optional I.O. books, and we'll show that in a mm -hmm. second as well, but you can get a choice of the, the standard length or the full length, depending on what kind of uh, adapter or GPU you, ha you mm. might want to use. Underneath the slots are the, the four power supplies. These are mm -hmm. the 1400 watt AC power supplies we have installed here. 
These, of course, are, are hot swap and redundant. Yep. Um, and we also support 900 watt power supplies as well. For, for small configurations, right. yeah. Yep. All right, so let's look at the, the um, primary IO book. Again, handles. Um, the blue handles indicate this is not a hot swap component. Um, remove the power before taking these out. So let's pop that out. So this is the primary IO book. Um, and it has in it four PCIe slots. So three of those are regular. Standardized PCIe, PCIe right? And, and then this is a unique the, uh, Lenovo Meslam right. slot or M ML2, ML2 right. that you'll see on our So what are the advantages of, of the ML2 adapters? The ML2 adapters, um, you can actually save quite a bit of cost compared to standardized PCI slots, and there's a few features as well offered with it. But right. cost savings seems <clears throat> to be the biggest savings. The, the ML2 support um, NCSI, that's a protocol for um, allowing the management port to be shared, um, right. if you so desire. Okay, okay. Um, this is the uh, air baffle. Right, so one of the reasons we have this air baffle here is, is it'll pull cool air through the hard drives that are at the front of the server, if you notice, this is lined up with the hard drives in the front of the server, and thus it pulls the air through the hard drives at the front, whereas the processors have their own fans sitting in front of them. And that's why the air baffle is in this way. Another interesting component, this system board here is what holds the firmware for the server actually as well. Yep. Um, the IMM, the Integrated Management Module, is, is on, on this system board as well. And I'll also, also point out the this is where the uh, USB hypervisor key is Correct. located as well. Correct. For if you, if you want to have VMware ESXi on a key, that's where that would go. This this lifts up just for easy access to those those components. Right. right. So I'll okay. show uh, the uh, optional I/O books. Yeah. So as Randy said, these I/O books um, are optional if you need the additional slots. And this one here is a uh, one of the, the this is the shorter of the two. Um, again, it, it, the handle indicates the whether it's a hot swap, and this being orange, this is a hot swap uh, IO book, and so that means that you can you can uh, add or replace uh, adapters while the system is running. Now, not every single adapter depends on the operating swap. system. Yeah. Depends on your applications, and, of course. Yep, yep. So <laughs> the requirement is that all adapters that are installed in the book need to support hot swap. Um, and you need to have operating system support and do various steps for that. But it's, it is a feature to ensure higher availability of the server. So this one here is the, the shorter I/O book. Right. So do you have a choice of you can put one optional I/O book or two optional I/O books? They both hold an additional three PCI slots. Mm -hmm. If you do have a full-length card or one that requires auxiliary power, we do have what we're calling the full-length I/O book. And let's show them the difference in the length here. Just like that, yeah. It will stick slightly out the back of the server, but it does have the length to support that you need for a full-length GPU card, mm -hmm. and it has up to 225 watts of auxiliary power in addition to the power that it draws from the PCI slot as well. Total of 300 watts. Total, it'll support an adapter up to 300 watts. Those are typically your double-wide, very high-power GPUs. Yeah, so if you're looking for <laughs> servers that support the high-end GPUs, and this is a great system for that. Right. Yep. Yep. And again, uh, the book design once again goes back into into the server like that. I'll show them how easy this slides in as yep. well. There we go. Right. So those are that's the components <coughs> in the back. All right. So there you have it. Um, this is the Lenovo System X 3850X6. Randy, thanks very much. Thank for you. That. I appreciate it. If you're if you're looking for more information about the server, um, in the description of the video, you'll find links to a product guide that we've produced. We have an implementation guide on this server and the the larger, the big brother of this server, the 3950. Um, that the link for that is there, and we also have other documents as well that will help you uh, learn more about the applications that run on this system. Thanks very much for your time. Hope you found the video useful, and we'll see you later.